you've taken a very strong position against what well, you did. This is now eight years ago, Brexit. Yeah. And in talking to people who supported it, because I was against it, but mm-hmm. I, 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 I was, I was kind of intrigued by wh- wh- the feelings of people mm-hmm. around this. Mm-hmm. It did seem to have. And one sense I got from people was that they had a feel that this Englishness was was disappearing too quickly, mm-hmm. that, that, that things were happening too fast, that they, they, that they didn't want to – they wanted to see their country roughly as it had always been in a way, and obviously mm-hmm. it was different. Now, this is different than sort of being – because the English are not, I mean, I don't think, and other people will say, but I, I think they're pretty easygoing on the mm. whole. Certainly not, they tend to live and let live in general. Yep. It's too much effort and to be nosy Absolutely. and bossy. You don't, that's not what you do. <laughs> but there came a point in which they just felt this is changing too fast and we can't control it. We have no control over it. And so this is, this is what was appealed to. And I just want you to, I completely understand your arguments and I totally respect them. And I think they're very strong arguments, maybe stronger in retrospect, although I, I think it's maybe it's still too soon to really understand hmm. what happened. But nonetheless, do you, under, do you, do you get that sense? Completely. Of- but those are not arguments. They are feelings. And I share mm. them. I share those feelings. My argument was that those feelings are not going to be addressed by leaving Europe. French people are not less French for being part of the EU. Austrians are fantastically Austrian. Germans are so German, it's embarrassing. How Italian can an Italian be? And they're all part of the EU. And removing us from from the EU would make us no more British uh, than we already are. And, And what we what you perceive as something that's disappearing from our identity, our culture, our nature, is not actually to do with the EU, and you're being sold a pup. And also on the political ends of it, immigration and so on, again, you misunderstand the structure of the EU and the Schengen Agreement and all the rest of it. There won't be a reduction in illegal immigrants when we leave the EU, and that is shown to be true. There's been an increase. So it was never that. And those were the things that were being sold. So I was against what was being sold as a lie, not against the feelings that people had that made them vote for it, but that those feelings were being exploited by dishonorable people like Johnson, who knew perfectly well that that was not the answer. And I'm all for taking control. And I would say, let's look at those wonderful English things, rivers, starting with Father Thames and then all the tributaries and all the other beautiful silvery rivers, the silvery Tay, as the poet McGonagall called it, they are all, without exception, polluted by a mixture of raw sewage and runoff of dangerous organophosphates and other chemicals from farm farmland. And the reason for all that is there is no control over them because the waterways, uh, English water, was privatised. And and that's another form of loss of control. I'm not all for government intervention and ownership and, you know, full nationalisation like the old Clause 4 of the Labour Party, but here's an example where we could control something, our rivers. They could belong to the people and we could make sure that w- rather than the literal billions being paid out in dividends by the water companies and the millions and millions being paid in bonuses. And I'm not trying to throw shit at, you know, caricature capitalists, but these are just truths. 